All right, then. Seems like we are back in action. Hopefully, it's going to be uh, an interesting game. Some tech issues to start with. I'd prefer to have the tech issues before the game goes live. Yeah. Um, so it's better. Uh, but yeah, we're going to get into it here. Again, to remind you, if you're yeah. just joining us, it's Namibia that are going to be playing Egypt here for a third place decider. Seems like everybody's sort of ready and maybe ready yeah. to get going. Uh, on go. stage, PCs and all the rest. And there, there we go. We are ready to get this show on the road. We've got Namibia Beautiful. taking on Egypt here, map number one. As we kicks off things over on Anubis for this one. And maybe we don't kickstart things. Uh, they've all gone back into spawn. So maybe a slight tech issue before we get things underway. Okay, I'm assuming. There we go. A little, little reset. But uh, yeah, this is going to be a good game. Obviously, they played in the groups already. Egypt won 2 to 0 in that one. 13 6 and 13 8. And, uh, you know, a completely different veto in that sense. But at the same time, Egypt are a very, very good side. We've already got to, got to catch them a little bit and see how good they can be. Yes. And in this game, I would probably see them as the, the ever so slight favorites. Yeah, the expectation is that Egypt are probably going to 2-0 this. Mm -hmm. um, but again, like, you know, Namibia so far, they've, they've been proving uh, a lot of different things. So yeah. I'm definitely going to keep an open mind about how well they're going to be able to play. Let's get into it right now. Countdown is live, and Namibia are going to be starting on the CT side. It's Egypt that are going to be starting on the T side here. So uh, that means they're going to be the more favorite side, but also means they're going to be making a lot of decisions. Yes. Which I think, um, you know, it can be just a, a nice thing, especially start a best of three. Mm -hmm. like you're in charge of everything. So let's see how they play it. They're going to start with one smoke, a couple of flashbangs, even a decoy on Weso. Interesting. Yeah, okay. Don't see enough decoys. Yeah, I guess he kind of had the half armor already, so he's like, why not? Yeah. Round it out to 100. First fight's going to be taken by Shackles, looking towards mid. I'm still going to try and... Push down on this position. They're going to get mid control sort of given here for free. Shackle's more than happy to play a little bit more of a passive angle. Yeah, super important. Like, not going down here is just, that's what he has. He has to stay alive. Falls back to the next angle. Great hair shot for Shackles. That's a nice start, but it might still be too much. Phase with a double in return, and it should allow the space for the bomb plant here. Yeah, just keep it cool now for Egypt. You don't want to be fighting this, and they're not. Very disciplined. Yeah, I love seeing that because I think Egypt probably feel like they are the better team. So you could have been tempted to fight two, like, you know, three versus four here. But in the end, it's probably not worth it. So yeah, just stay a little bit chilled out here. They're going to be getting the kill on the nowhere. Kazi goes down next. And nice triple for FaZe in this round. Just very well executed. Um, yeah, everything worked out. Yeah, I mean, Egypt played that perfectly in the post -bomb. They just don't peek. There's no need to fight in that sort of situation. Give them the space, let them overextend, let them make the mistakes and sort of be isolated, and they were. Really nice fights being taken by them. Great crossfire set up, and that's sort of a, that sort of perfect post plant that you want to see on that side. So really well done from Egypt. Will mean for them uh, a nice little bite to come through in towards round number two. And unfortunately for Namibia, can't really do anything in terms of their investment in this next round. So a bit of a lower one, just USPs across the board. Nothing really going to be expected of this sort of round, but they're going to gamble style. That's sort of the way to go about it. Try and do something a little bit more unorthodox and might just give you a try. On. Shackles will take a little bit of fire damage. And again, they're just poking and prodding. I think for Egypt, it's about finding out where the gamble stack is. Yeah, and typically, it's the job of the Mac 10 on phase. Send them in there. Make, make sure. Don't, yeah. you know, don't, don't guess too much. And um, I think that's probably what's going to happen eventually. Egypt, happy to wait around at the start of it. Again, don't really mind it. They're not going to be, obviously, throwing any grenades at you, but, um, yeah, they're making absolutely sure that nothing tricky is going on at the moment. So, yeah. a minute on the clock here, and the bomb is further back. I think Bingo's going to go and pick that up right now, and they're so deep in the middle that they're probably just going to go for the A-bomb site here. FaZe calling it out, saying, all right, I've spotted at least one. There's a boost back there. Yeah, so he's going to find out. Again, he doesn't even have to get a single kill. Just get in the confirmation that they're there. It's going to be plenty enough here. So, yeah, a little bit overwhelming. He dies. Not a big deal. Yeah, and now they're just going to run all the way over towards the site. Completely open towards A. So, bomb goes down. Nice and simple. And it will be just about making sure you don't drop anything more. Don't really mind dropping a Mac 10. Let's just make sure the likes of an AK, for example. No one drops into the wrong hands. Hello. We'll take a little bit of fight. They behind it. That could do the damage, and it will. Turo going to get caught by it. But at the very least, small little consolation kills can be found right at that tail end here for Egypt. Make sure this round is taken cleanly. They've got to make sure they exit as well quite cleanly. They can probably head out towards CT. Be absolutely fine. Shackles on the Mac 10 does have a little spam to hope to find something, but it's not to be. Because it will fall as well. Egypt, really nice round from them. Only the one casualty, but it was an information play from FaZe. Guarantees that they're not over towards that site. And 
But then they just go the other way, right? It's quite simple. You look towards B, people are there, rotate towards A. Nice and simple. Wesso going to get one more at the end, and it will be a 2-0 start for Egypt. But that was more or less a complete throwaway round for Namibia. This is the one we look into. First full buy, we've got to see what they can bring to the table. They've got to try and settle the nerves a little bit on the stage once again by making this one clean. Yeah, I think so. Uh, if you're the underdog team, winning, winning one of these early rounds is super, super important. And again, like we've been reiterating quite a bit, you are on the CT side here on Anubis. So it, it can be very hard to get the economy rolling. Now it's time to really do it. Yeah. Got uh, a couple of M4s, one for Mars there on tour. He's going to be having a, a lot more utility as a result. So I appreciate that, you know, sacrificing with the team a little bit. He's still got the, the diffuse kit if they need it. So, um, yeah, it's less fun for him with the map with the FAMAS, but might get the job done anyway. And this looks like a B execute if I've ever seen one. They are not in the middle. They're going to be sending one player that's bingo through the dark position. I think it's going to be fairly quick once it gets going. There we go. Kazi. I just dropped a smoke. Actually, maybe slight miscom there as nowhere in Kazi both dropped the same smoke. The spam isn't bad, a little bit of damage being dealt there. And Bingo waiting for his opportunity. Wesso does get caught eventually through that smoke. That's a good opening frag to find. Wow. Yeah. Looking for more as well. Going to try and pop yourself through this smoke. That's a ballsy play out towards Jail. And he might just get a kill off the back of it. AK spray is loose. Kazi will somehow get away with another. But the site is taken by Egypt. Bomb goes down by B2K. And this is a tough retake. Both rotating over from the other side. Definitely surprised to see Kazi get that second kill. It looked like he was straight dead from the flashbang. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, good job. I still think it's not enough for you. Like, Tura and, and Seth are so far away. Uh, so the ability to, to, like, walk all the way across the map here and actually defuse the bomb, I don't think that's going to happen. So yeah. Egypt overall, pretty clean stuff. And that's in spite of the fact that they actually lost a player through the smoke before they even got started. So, yeah, that's that's pretty convincing and perhaps a bit of a, a bad omen for, for Nambia going forward. Yeah, okay. yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, if you look at it now, of course, they're going to have a really awkward buy in towards this next round too, and they might even still struggle to save at the tail end. Face, all trade on towards Zeph. So that's only the one gun being saved over in towards the next being just the FAMAS. It, it's not that sort of uh, kind of save that you can buy around. So I'm going to make this a little bit awkward. I'm assuming probably a, a half buy here, sticker on that 2K mark, and so Namibia can buy in towards the next, but... Not a good spot that they're in. 3 0 start for Egypt. Probably going to be made four. Even if they were to force by it, it would still be expected for them to get a fourth here. So I think oh, the, yeah. the way to go about it is sort of half by this round here, but full by next, and hope you can just sort of find that form there. But first full by doesn't go well. Losing to the bonus, too, always going to hurt a little bit. Got some 5 7s out on the map, and I mean, we've seen those before do significant damage, so you never know. You get into a close range. True. Definitely can be pretty lethal. Again, stacked towards the B bomb site. They are pushing out of the site as well, but I think Bingo's already calling out, saying, yeah, they're definitely there. Actually wants to take a bit of a fight with them, so yeah, calling in a teammate. I don't really mind necessarily. I'm very, very, very confident at the moment. Ooh. Oh, I can't believe that is not a one fight for Bingo. That's kind of crazy. Spam, though, is good. Shackles will get caught through it. Now we're going to have a little look, but again, no information going to be gained here. They're just going to walk all the way. Over towards the A site. They know that nobody's really here that's going to be able to fight them, at least in terms of the firepower. FAMAS will get caught by Wesso. Good clearance. Tura gets caught. And that, and that being said, that is the round. Maybe a FAMAS recovered is a small thing. Or maybe an AK recovered. There's one deep over towards that B site. But I mean, I've got that. I think for nowhere, just keep hold of it. He's got one point of HP. No armor. No <laughs> point giving it a look in. Just keep hold of this AK-47. It's actually a small win in itself on a low buy. Yeah, I think so. I agree. Like really even out the battle for the next round that's coming up where you know you spam through the smoke with the AK you get a little bit lucky it can, yeah. it can, it can be a great start so hold on to that and, and again try to kind of calm the nerves of everybody here because obviously it's a bit of a rough start Egypt running with some of the early rounds it is a little bit what I touched upon in the uh, you know in the opening this idea that Anubis if you just don't get going on the CT side it can be, it can be kind of a rough affair sometimes um, and I think that's what Namibia are experiencing ever so slightly. Yeah. Zeph might have a little look at the end here, but it'll you know, cost him his life. Down he falls. That being said, 4-0 to zero start for Egypt. Great work for them out the gate early. Building up a real repertoire of an economy as well. So I think everything that could go right is going right so far. And I think the issue that we're now starting to arise is for Namibia, if this gun round doesn't go successfully, they're in a hell of a lot of trouble. We're talking about probably at that point, Egypt pushing all the way to a 6-0 start. And at that point, that's a T side that's running away with the game. Yeah, it really is. Um, yeah, they seem to be absolutely fired up here, Egypt, which 
That kind of goes to their play style, right? Like yeah. one of the things that's kind of fun to, about watching the guys play is that they are really confident. They're yeah. very aggressive, and I kind of enjoy that. Shackles, though, he's picked up the AWP now, which is you normally saw him as a rifle and more. Yeah. But he's able to do it all, it seems. We've had three different players who have wielded the AWP for the maybe We've had Shackles, we've had Nowhere, and we've had Tura as well. Sometimes spawn base, and I guess sometimes maybe just vibes base. Sometimes a player just feels like I'm in a decent amount of form here. Shackles was great yesterday, so I don't really hate the idea of him orping. Nowhere, unfortunately. Molotov doesn't bank off there. He just catches the clipping of the corner, so unfortunately gets extinguished by the smoke. Yeah, it doesn't cost him his life, but um, you know, it could have been. So, a couple of opening kills here for the Mibia. This is, this is really great. The setup seems to work as well. Maybe there's, a, you know, the weakness right now would be towards mid and A. Yeah. But there's still two players here, so it's not really a big weakness. But it just, oh, now they're pushing out of the B bomb side. They're actually getting great information at the moment. Means they can rotate nowhere towards the middle. He can be closer to the A bomb site. Yeah, they're doing everything right. Let me be here. Like, this should be their round. They're increasing the odds by, by what they're up to here. Flashing their way in. Some smokes are getting set up here. Toro is going to get the kill on the bingo. And actually, what a position. Great little double headshot here. That should be enough to win the round. Chora, yeah. rock solid. Chora's done really well there. He just played around that box perfectly. That angle is a little bit of, of a tough one if they get into pillar control. Right? If they get pillar, you would normally just spam down and you're lost. But because you've got a heaven player who's putting up a lot of kind of pressure in that situation, he can just keep dipping his head up and down from that box, and it works really, really well. So Tura, great work from him. Nice triple at the tail end as well, just making sure they get no coverage over towards A. And the Mibia finally getting that first round. And this is where we can start talking about using that as a catalyst to further success. Hopefully, right, consecutive rounds on the board on this CT side. If they can get at least five rounds, I think it's workable. Anything less, though, and that's the thing potentially become a little bit awkward. And of course, for Egypt, plenty of money to buy back in. FaZe will pick up an AWP himself. He did see as well that Shackles had it in that previous round. So he's going to be more than happy to wield one of his own. A decent little head-to-head -head between those two. They both had the great moments yesterday. Yeah, you're right. If you, do, if you, if you can't win the consecutive rounds, I mean, the, the conversation you know, kind of changes a lot here. So you have to keep it up. But that's the kind of quality that we saw out of Namibia in, a, in the last game that we were covering them on, where, yeah, they kind of, you know, they have some firepower. They can definitely go to toe-to-toe -to -toe with True. some of the Egyptian players here. So that's like a good foundation. We'll see if they can build something more. Some mid-aggression being attempted here on the Egyptian side. No real commitment with the bomb anywhere. So you can see that Egypt are still just kind of, you know, feeling it out, figuring out exactly what they want to do. Deep grenade here, trying to isolate B2K, see if they can actually win the fight against him. Not quite. Strong headshot there, and he'll keep it going. Oh, it's so decisive, isn't it? Wants to almost find a third there. That would have been sick, but um, either way, it should be plenty enough. Tora, actually, I can't believe it. He's found a way to get a couple of kills there. There's no way he should have been able to do that. That's pretty sick, but Seth now with a clutch on his hands. It's a tough one, B2. Got a flash, got a kit. Got a chance as well. Full HP. He's not going to completely count him out of this one. If he had a smoke, this would be so much more doable. Might be he, one down. Yeah, if you could pick it up, like, that'd be really sick because he needs to find a way to pressure them into peeking him. Mm. Bingo is out in front, but after that, it's the AWP. And also, obviously, if you smoke the AWP, it's going to be even more interesting. Flash around the corner. Yeah, that uh, is always going to be a very, very hard yeah. one. Don't really blame Seth for it. it I, it's very, very hard to win that kind of round. So, Egypt back on track and... Kind of worst case scenario for Namibia here. Yeah, because it, it, it resets you in terms of a mental state. That feels like a chance where you can maybe start building off the back of that previous round and start utilizing it in your favor. And then unfortunately, you sort of can't, right? You immediately get reset. You immediately get pulled back into kind of that back foot once again, where it's a four round deficit. They do have money to work with, right? So they can buy here, I think. Zest got 7K. He can drop over a rifle. Kazi got to drop over a rifle as well. So for Tura and Nowhere, they can pick up an investment here if they want to. But they might even just go for maybe a little bit more of a hero buy and then. Uh, sort of a minimal investment around it and just completely reset the economy in that sense. That's one way I've got about it. One person who picks a rifle who's got a lot of money, everybody else sticks around 2K and you're sort of all staying about 2K money-wise and then you go towards the next with a full buy. It looks yeah. sort of like that's what they're going for. We've got double MP9s coming through, Belter Util coming out and then 5.7s for the two lower players. I think that's a fair enough buy. It's absolutely workable for Namibia, but at the same time, it's about resetting that economy, making sure you're not like one player on 7K, one player on 3K, which is the issue that they had. I can make buyers going down the line a little bit more uncomfortable. Egypt, though, now they've got a fifth. This could also be where they, technically, in terms of 
the buy, have the advantage, get the sixth, and a great start for B2K. Got a double opener towards that previous round, gets a single opener here. Yeah, I think because we're playing MR12 now instead of 15, you just have fewer rounds to try and, you know, stop like a spiral. Sure. So getting a couple of MP9s and everything like that, just anything you can. Like if, if, the, if something works, it's really going to save the half. So um, I think it's worth trying for, but my God, Egypt are super fired up here. Where's the double kill on the round? He's up to seven in total. And obviously, bomb is going to be planted here. This is just looking, I'd say, fairly decisive at the moment. Yeah. MP9. Ghazi hopes to try and just hide behind the back lines and see if he can get a kill of himself. Maybe even bait in a couple of fights, but not to be. Good due diligence to clear in towards heaven, and it will be Egypt collecting a sixth. I mean, starting really well towards this map, their map pick. And hence, kind of the conversation are. I was having about when they played in the group stage. I was actually quite surprised that A, Namibia let it float towards a third map as a decider, but also that Egypt didn't just pick into it outright. It's a map in which throughout the open qualifiers, actually really good for them. We saw them yesterday, also very good. So maybe one of those things where coming in towards the tournament, it, they weren't incredibly confident on it. They maybe have played it a little bit, but they had other maps where they thought were better. But since being here on the stage, they've realized this is actually a really good map for us. Hence why it sort of changed up our veto a little bit. Off well, Egypt, you can see why. So far on the seaside, they look great. Yeah, they love it. Oh, a nice flashbang here, but unfortunately they were playing the anti-flash position yeah. up there. And when you throw a flashbang and, and the T's are kind of waiting for it, all you're really doing is you're, you're basically signaling to them, we're going to be peeking. So actually, they might have the advantage because they know exactly what they're peeking into. So a bit of a bit of a shame. Yeah. Um, sometimes you could pair it with like a Molotov, or you could even you know, you could, you'd throw more than one flashbang to try and like bait them into the second one. A lot of different options. Again, I don't really hate that Namibia are trying to do this because I think they have to they have to be active. They have to do something to get a good start. And this time it's backfired on them, but I still think it's worth the attempt. This is gonna be a very hard round to salvage though. You can like sometimes you'll see in a three v four like this, you actually should just stack a bomb site. Yeah. And just cross your fingers and if you if they don't show up, you save the rifles. You just call it before it even happens, you know. That's true. Well, for now, forty five seconds to make this decision. Four versus three. Two over towards that B site, one via eight. West are still just waiting for a peak. So far, nothing really being game. It looks like the bomb's going to come back over in this direction. Nowhere could be under a little bit of pressure here. This could be awkward. Then a Molotov gets dropped, and he's going to rotate away. Doubling back now as well, but fight being taken. Shackles need to be careful. The orb gets tagged down low. West are now spotted out as well, but they're going to get space on towards this B site. They can start to make a move. Molotov as well will make their life difficult. As B2K gets that plant down, you actually might even call for a save here. I don't think it's the worst call in the world. These three stay alive and go in towards the next, but even that's not allowed. Tura gets caught in rotation. There's Bingo. Catches him transitioning over towards this B site for that retake. Nowhere else are going to get clipped as well. Even Shackles all alone. And this now on a 1v4, you could be tempted to try and just fall Ooh. away with the AWP alive, but Faisal's got other ideas. Great shot from him. And it will be yet another round for Egypt. They're making light work out of the start of this game so far. Yeah, I think the fact that Wezo got to spend so much time hanging around the main entrance to B and just, he didn't see anybody. Yeah. He's probably going to be like, you know, listen, there's, like, if we go, if there is a player in dark, You've got three people coming that way. Mm. You probably win that fight, and then the rest of the bomb site, like you can just run on there. Like it, there's so much space here. I'm not getting challenged by anybody. I'm not getting smoked off. Like they don't have any more grenades. So a lot of information. Even though he didn't necessarily see a player, he just kind of I think had a good read on what was going on there. Wow, seven to one. First half is coming to a close pretty soon, actually. And yeah. Egypt are just oh, relentless. Yeah, this low by round being put to bed nice and early by Egypt. Opening a couple of kills coming through for Alone and Wesso. And maybe, yeah, like I said, with this low by the pistols, they're, they're hoping to try and make something work. But it looks like this is not going to be the round for it. Unless something magical happens on the site here. Bingo once again holding. Well, he might be gifted the frag and he will nowhere walk straight into the cross here. That'll cost him his life. He didn't want to expect a second though, so he might get caught. No, 180, what? you'll find Turret. Tura couldn't capitalize on the opportunity, neither can Zeph. A flawless round from Egypt to put up an eighth, and that is a beautiful display. Yet another round where it had its moment of being scary, and Egypt makes sure that it's not. Yeah, getting away with a little bit inside of the bomb side there, that was pretty funny, but uh, yeah, nice reaction. Eight to one. Bingo here. Yeah, he's been a, a real character to watch. Yeah. Um, could see on the little cams as well like he's really vocal like you know i was just like fired up at the moment no question about it 
individually on the Namibian side, definitely having a, a harder time getting into this game right off the bat. Oh, it's phased to begin with. Takes down nowhere. That makes it a little bit rough here. Shackles, what have you got for us? He's going to get the first one, tries to re-peak it because he knew he was under pressure. He was going to get Molotov, so yeah. he had to kind of like take that fight. But it paves the way for another bomb plant here. And another three versus four. And I could be tempted to save. It is tempting. It depends on how like how many rounds you can let them get away with. Yeah, there's sort of two arguments here, right? Do we save and actually just utilize this buy again towards the next because we have no way of getting back in? Or do we look at the, at the other yeah. way and say, you know, we're already 8 1 down. What have we actually got to lose here? We probably need to be trying to convert some of these rounds. That's maybe the sort of the, the, the argument to be had here. But I think in this instance, it's probably two things of A, we actually have no information about what the setup looks like, and B, we're just so far away. So the bomb's already going to be ticked five to 10 seconds by the time we even get there. Then we've got to clear it and try and get a defuse in. Yes, they've got kits, but it still just makes it really awkward. Timing-wise, the main thing, though, is you do have to save. And Kazi getting caught, and Zeph might be around the corner in a bit of a perilous state as well. He does get tagged, but he stays alive with 18 points of HP. Oh, it's a bit of a sigh of relief. It is going to be okay for a buy, though. At least two drops can come over, so that's still manageable and workable and all the rest. But 9-1, to one, man. This is, so far... And one-sided story in towards Anubis. Egypt, light work out of their map pick so far. And this is the T-side as well. I mean, obviously, this is a map that is T-sided, but it's not this T-sided. Yeah, they're kind of, they're really flying through this first half. There's no question about it. Like, they just, they feel confident. They've come up with a really, like, a good mix of aggression. But not, they're not, like, carelessly throwing the rounds away either. Yeah, sure. Like, it's a good little sort of pace that they found right now. That is one hell of a grenade in the middle that lands on the Egyptian side. So they take a lot of damage. See if this is going to be maybe an opening. Maybe they, they need the last two rounds here. They're like 9-3 yeah. at an absolute minimum. If you win the pistol on the second half, then yeah, open discussion once again. But they have to get there. Good trade. Oh, it's close to being a shot. They know where Seth is and they should be able to grenade him out of there. Yeah, just yeah. get rid of him. That leaves Shackles with an MP9. Oh, that's rough at the A bomb site. How do you win this? Bam's doing a decent amount of damage. Zeph going to tag both down low. I mean, this MP9 is three players barreling in that are all in that sort of one bullet position. But the one player that fights is Bingo's full HP. He can take a tag, and he does. Gets that kill, and once again, now we might have temptations to save Bingo. Right idea. Right execution as well. Noah gets caught just phasing through that smoke. And it will be now a two versus four. All the players are low over towards Egypt. So it is still a possibility in that sense. But they've got to go here and now. They've got to make a move. Two has an AD, has a Molotov. I mean, they in themselves could force out fights, but he's opting just to go. Here we go. Molotov will come down. That'll force on a little bit of an engagement. Bit of a tag to come through. B2K, Faze, both. Seriously low. Zeph for the first, but now he's all that's left. One versus three, and it's not 2B. B2K with a double at that tail end. I mean, Egypt lock in 10. At the very least, heading in towards that second half. I mean, that is incredible. Yeah, I honestly, I understood why they wanted to go for that at the end. Even if it's like a, you know, a two on four, you're right. They were tacked up. And I just think at the end of it, it's, um, you, you knew you had to win a couple of more rounds, right? Yeah. So you, you really had to give it a damage, shot. I guess yeah. as well. Tough times. Round number 12. They got some money to work with, at least on the Namibian yeah. side. So let's see if they can get like a second round here. Win the pistol. It's still a very, very long road back, but it has to start somewhere. <laughs> B2K, good shot on the Tora. They are just absolutely relentless right now. Egypt looking to claim that third spot. They're so crisp as well, aren't they? I mean, Egypt, they're just not missing anything. You know, we saw in towards yesterday, for example, when they had their moments in Namibia, they were getting really loud and they're kind of the chants are falling and all the rest. It was, you know, really good to see. But you can see kind of how muted they are. And this is what sort of where you look towards some of your leadership figures and say, you know, even though times are tough, we need you to get a little bit loud just to boost the morale, just to give us a chance. And maybe you win just one round and it can just fire you up. You need these small things to go in your favor. Wesso holding nowhere, tempted to buy the peak, but it might cost him his life. He's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. He obviously knows that B2K was there over towards main earlier, killed his teammate. He's not left alone and he's stuck between a really tough angle, but he will get a shot. Wesso gets caught. Probably should have capitalized there, Wesso, but he really isn't able to do so. Only tags him once. Yeah, great work to begin with. They're not at all out of the woods yet here. Could see nowhere is still absolutely nobody to help him out here. So if he dies, I mean, again, the bomb site's lost almost instantly. Trying to make it out. They're going to take down Seth. That's towards the middle. 
and a hunt is on. B2K relentlessly looking for the kill. They're going to take shackles on the other side. They're winning fights all across the map at the moment. 18 seconds left. That actually could be a problem. The bomb is kind of lost here. Oh, Kazi, if you won that fight, I think he wins the round, but not going to be possible. 11 to 1 for Egypt. That is pretty decisive. Yeah, what a showing coming through from Egypt. They just look brilliant. There is very little to, to basically nothing we can say in a negative note over towards them. Great performance all the way through. They've picked in towards this map and they're showcasing why they've picked into it. This is a, a very, very strong one for them. And unfortunately, I just think for Namibia, it, it just isn't. It's, it had its gaps within the groups. It has gaps within kind of their, their playoff game yesterday at Anubis. And of course, they're sort of showcasing, unfortunately, once again here. But Egypt, just a different beast. I think they had their moments yesterday where, unfortunately, against South Africa, they felt a little muted. They weren't really playing the way that they should be, where they do yeah. kind of lie off the back of these individuals. I think they had a little bit alone dropped that 30 kills in the overtime and that was great but we need the rest of the team to step up the thing is here we're seeing multiple different facets of firepower it's, it's a team-wide performance nobody's hard carrying nobody's anchoring over towards egypt everybody has their moments and when you're playing against a team where all five are on fire what can you actually do this pistol round is an absolute necessity for Namibia, lose this. Unfortunately, it might be game set in towards Anubis. But the opening fight's good. Kazi will find it. Alone gets caught. And Bomb will go down. Yeah, retake is on. I will say this. They've got two smokes and also a defuse kit on B2K. So this is going to be an interesting round right up until the end. If they get close enough here, they can defuse it inside of the smoke. So you've got to be a little bit careful. It doesn't look like they're going to get close at all. Wow, they're getting absolutely wrecked in this one. Kazi with a nice triple here. And Namibia, again, like, you know, do something, anything, even just to slow down the game a little bit, because there's this weird effect that can happen when you're losing yeah. this much that it feels like the map is over so quick. Like, you don't yeah. even know that you're like, wow, are we already losing? Like, you don't yeah. get a chance to really breathe. So get a couple of rounds here, slow it down, just so it doesn't feel like you're just getting completely blown up. Yeah, it's true. It's true. At least for now. Doesn't seem to have affected the mood over towards Egypt. They're not going to force buy in towards this one. Low buy here, full buy next. They've done the bulk of their work on the gun rounds. I mean, they've done the work on every sort of round, if we're being honest. But the gun rounds are where they look super, super clean. So I can sort of respect this decision. Low buy here, full buy next. They might even still make it a little bit awkward. Hang on a second. They've got the opening double kill. And they've both picked up rifles. This could be still a conversation to be had. If they fully eco them, I think that's uh, at that point, you have to say... Yeah. There's just no contest, really, right? Probably no coming back from that kind of situation. And even just mentally, like, even I would, I mean, the two Galils here, like, if you really wanted to, I suppose they could just be feeling so good that they're like, whatever, let's just go. But um, in theory, you could, you, could, you could opt to save these and just be happy with them in the next round. Oh, hang on. Alone might have an idea here. And it could actually work out because it's not being, oh, it is being helpful. I tell a lie. Left knows exactly what he's doing. This is about exit frags more than anything, right? Make it expensive over towards that T side. I think this is a good, uh, yeah. good idea to be having here. Maybe even a late round pop. Smoke will plume on the bomb. At the lineup they know about. However, Shackles are the right ideas. We'll get one. The Mac 10 go with a knife on the bomb to make sure that nobody's on it. They're trying to make it expensive. Keep bodies drawn towards the site. And in all fairness, three kills out of five? That's not bad for a full eco out from Egypt. One to the bomb, two to the kills. I think you're taking the silver linings there. That was a complete throwaway oh, yeah. round. We have no expectations in that sort of a, a round there where we have not invested at all. And we walked away with three kills. That's not actually terrible. Now they're going to full buy as well to work with. Yeah, they had one flashbang in that last round, Egypt, that they kind of like popped out. They managed to crunch outside of the day bomb site, and it, it all just worked out very well. So, 11 to 3. Namibia is finally getting a couple of rounds on the board here, but obviously with the rifles out. On the CT side, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. Yeah. Looks like for now, T side's going to group up. Up in towards middle. Zeph actually going to be completely caught by that. And a second behind, it could make it a little bit awkward. Bingo for the first. Turin for that trade. And Wesha doesn't need to stick around for the fight. He can just fall back. Doesn't need to commit here. He knows there's a lot of bodies that have shown their presence in towards mid. Don't overfight. Yeah, because if you die, you're going to leave FaZe alone behind you, and it, like you're, you're putting your teammate in a very awkward position, and there's, like, it's just, yeah, the upside could be maybe you win, but yeah. the downside might be completely screwing over your, your teammate here. Nice little boost. We've seen this before. They do have one Molotov on Nowhere, but he's throwing it to the other corner. So, again, this boost could work out very well. It could be very hard to anticipate. Oh, actually, it looks like they did it. The Shackles definitely was looking for it, but he just didn't win the fight there. Still, had the right idea. 
Nowhere trying to move up. He knows they're both in the corner, oh. and he's going to get a good double spray down. Wezo takes down Toro in the meantime. Still a two versus two here. Oh, I say that as Wezo lands a nice headshot. Now one on one. And look at the position here for FaZe. He's going to have an advantage. He, he, can, he knows exactly where Kasi is. So, yeah, takes him down. Had all the information to work with. Egypt going to be up to 12. Yeah, beautiful stuff as well. And the awkward thing there for, for, for Kasi, he, he sort of starts looking around the CT. He starts trying to figure out where this guy's rotating in from. But he has to go into the open because that's where the bombs drop. So yeah. he was always exposed to literally all three angles. CT, connector, and towards dark. You just screwed there. He has three, and actually technically four, we're talking about main. But they just come from main. So they probably expect nobody's there, at least... Not on that timing, but you're it's essentially exposed to four different angles to try and recollect the bomb. You're a dead man walking. It's so unfortunate. And you didn't have the util either to sort of isolate fight, so it made things very difficult indeed. 12 to 3. Egypt, so far, so good. A last hurrah of a buy, and it will be Zeph to try and kickstart things. And actually pretty effectively, but Tura going to get caught in the back lines. Nade off the back of it too could be huge. The bomb is on the wrong side, so they might, even if they take the bomb side here, the problem is Shackles, oh, he's going to slip the net. He's going to go back to the B bomb side Ooh. instead. This is going to be really funny. So they're going to be having this. Where is he? <laughs> yeah, in, in like two seconds, they're going to be like, where well, the bomb's planted? What's going on? Full on retake, three versus one Shackles with a tech nine. So Utah. absolutely wacky round here, but yeah, it'd be really funny if he could win this round. I still think getting the full comeback here Ooh. is going to be nearly impossible, but, um, you know, for Shackles, we know he's got the skills for it. See what he could do. Put off a couple of 1v2s in towards yesterday's game, right? So definitely not going to completely count this guy out. 1v3 turn 1v2. But they're both going to fight together. First fight taken well. Put it down into the 1 versus 1. Surely not. Attack 9 and a 1 versus 3. But Bingo closes it. Just for a brief moment, we started to believe. But it will be Egypt. 13 to 3. Their map pick taken with ease. And really making a statement early in towards this best of 3. Yeah, that's uh, as super comprehensive and like the energy coming out of the Egyptian side, you could just kind of feel like from the beginning, uh, like a very good mix of aggression, yeah. but also like a little bit of respect in the right moment so that they don't throw away needless rounds, which yeah. was a problem for them in the past. Um, you know, getting a little bit too overconfident. Not today. So yeah, just uh, I, it, nothing to criticize really for them, I think. Um, and Namibia, I think feeling the, the heat of being on that CT side earlier, just never getting the economy, like never. Yeah, and the interesting thing is they had the choice, right? They yeah. could have started T side. And I felt like yesterday when we saw them do their best work, it was on the T side. So they could have gone towards the T side of Anubis there and been the ones who dictate the tempo of the game and sure, really yeah. tell us sort of how the pace of it is played out. But they just opt against there. They go towards the CT, and I think that really cost them. It's always tough on Anubis if you start on the CT and you start badly. I think if you're an underdog, playing T side, no matter actually what the map, is actually a, maybe a way to gain an advantage just because yeah. you can just be a little bit unorthodox in terms of how the pace of the game is played out. But unfortunately for Namibia, it just never really got started. And I think the, the awkward thing for them is that because that first half was just so one-sided, the conversation around a comeback was just so outlandish. It was never really going to be something that kind of got off the table. Yeah, unfortunately, not this time. Obviously, second map to be played. So um, hopefully, like, a, you know, deep breath, a little bit of leadership on the Namibian side, like have a conversation with the boys and, mm. and, and figure it all out. That's got to be the that's gotta be the way to, to think about this. Um, yeah, forget about the map and just move on, which in itself is one of the experiences of playing on LAN is like, ha can you get like the mental recovery of, uh, of losing early on and then kind of like getting back into it? That's a, yeah. that's a whole dimension of Counter-Strike all on its own. But yeah, Egypt, I mean, they're... They're going to be looking to, to do the same on the second map, I'm sure. Yeah, the tough thing is with, with Inferno coming up next, right? It's just a map that Egypt will know. They'll know yeah, with ease, right? It's a map they'll know and love uh, and sort of have this understanding about how to play. And it actually inherently actually plays up quite similarly towards Anubis in terms of the way it's set. T-Size can get a lot of proactivity. It's actually the second most t sided map that we've got kind of got True. in the pool yeah. right now. So uh, I think, you know, these small things that start to play out in terms of the advantages over towards Egypt, that's the thing that worries us a little bit. Yeah. I think for Namibia, we need to kind of utilize this 10, 15 minute sort of break in between the maps and, and just sort of say, right, how are we going to get back into this? How are we going to start things? Well, this is our pick. There's mostly a reason we've picked into it. Now we've got to figure out why. We've got to figure out where the gaps are. And I think the, the, it's just the small things I think are right. A pistol round has to go your way to give you a little bit of momentum. A uh, first gun round to give you that confidence in terms of actually we can yes, in head to head yeah. duels compete. That'd be small nice. Small things like this. And I just think as well, you know, it's one of the things that made them maybe actually quite good yesterday was just when they were vocal, when they were loud, when they were kind of really getting fired up. It's just these small things of confidence internally yeah. that really helped them. But we actually just didn't see or hear any of it. Yeah, because they just, they never had like the you know the 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 space to like yeah. win enough round like consecutive rounds to be like okay now we're doing yeah. it. like or even like big clutches where you're like okay now we're fired up like True. this guy just did it so um hopefully that is something that we can uh, we can kind of get you know get into a little bit um, yeah 
Um, they all played very, very well in, in the first half, to be honest, there, or yeah. the first map. Just generally uh, looking quite good. So curious if uh, if we're going to see a couple of players there on the uh, on the Namibian side. You know, second map hopefully gets sure. started well. Um, we know they've got a couple of players uh, that can do it. So, yeah, yeah. we, we want to see them online. Yeah, really good game out of Wesso as well. 15 kills to his name, which may not look like a lot, but they, uh, the whole team stepped up, right? There was they basically did, yeah. no disparity between the top and the bottom of the scoreboard over towards Egypt, and that's actually a really impressive thing in itself. And, and then we saw on the other side, I mean, 100 ADR for him, having his impact all the way through, played a lot of those high impact roles, a lot of util damage being dealt round upon round. So these small things that really add up, I think for Wesso, it's a great performance. And he's now sort of like the third, fourth different player that we've been able to highlight from Egypt, which again, just showcases how good this team actually is, right? We've already highlighted people like Bingo, for example, or alone who've had their moments all the way throughout and now adding another name to that tally that makes the job even harder for Namibia on the oh other yeah. side well we are going to be uh, headed to a break before we actually get into the second map of course if you are just joining us third place decider here between Egypt and Namibia so stay tuned and we'll be right back Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are ready with the second map. It is going to be on Inferno here. We've got the third place decider here at the African Championships. And it is Egypt playing up against Namibia. Yeah. And so far, it's been very one-sided. Egypt just coming out uh, like super strong, super confident. Yeah. And, and they kind of just overwhelmed them, I think. Like, I think Namibia never had a chance to really get their feet on the ground, unfortunately. Yeah, safe to say a one-sided map, right? Yeah. I don't think there's really too many conversations about that. 13 to, to 3, I mean, we really just showed how good Egypt actually can be. I think the one little caveat, I guess you could say, is that that was their map pick. That's a map which to be very good when the open qualifiers and the groups and all the rest. So it's always been sort of a pocket pick for them. However, it was a dominant display. And it wasn't really in, in just in terms of small things like uh, the strategic side of things or, or anything like that. It was actually just the raw fundamentals. The mechanics out from Egypt were incredible. Oh, all yeah. the way throughout, every single <coughs> player had their moments and they stepped up in terms of the raw aim. So we're looking at this and it could actually be more of the same. You can maybe account for uh, strategic differences between sides and maybe find ways to counter it. But if we're talking legitimately about things like aim, I mean, there's very little you can do if you are just getting raw out aim. They're heading in towards our map number two, of course, though. It is going to be Inferno up on the docket, and this is the pick of Namibia. So maybe a chance for them to get back in. Oh, that is so dangerous. He could have definitely had that. Probably an easier way to set up that smoke, but they are going to try and be quick. It looks like it's going to be a beast split if they can make it through, but they've shut down the entire arm of it. Look, this banana push was meant to be meeting up with the two players pushing through yeah. Arch. And they just never really get there. Now a smoke is up. Molotov on the other side as well. Or incendiary rather. But yeah, this could be interesting timing here. It's not going to slow them or stop them. But I guess it's still a nice attempt to try and throw that grenade. The retake should be doable. Or maybe, or oh, especially now. Tura goes down. No bomb hunt even allowed for here. Seth going to get completely run down. That is aggressive. Egypt, again, that's more of the same for them here. Yeah, beautiful way to start things off, right? Really set that tone early. Coming towards the CT side, dictate the pace of the game, right? By taking the early fight to self. I mean, there's a great way if you're on the CT side to really make the, the sort of T side feel uncomfortable. It's just to fight them, right? Get up in their face. And that's exactly what Egypt do, right? In towards mid, they're taking fights as they try and pop in towards this sort of long position. Like you said, they had this idea on a spawner, which is we're going to wrap in through CT and meet you at B. But yeah. that wrap gets caught immediately. So then you've got three players rushing on towards the site. And even though a smoke and a molly comes down, it's about that retake. Really well done from Egypt. No bomb plant, no chance. And maybe at left over. A bit of an awkward low buy in this one. And it's a massacre in towards mid. A couple of kills are going to come through. And hang on a moment. We're somehow <laughs> in a two versus two. But thankfully, the MP9 gets in behind. Last man should be an own quantity, at least in towards apartments. And an MP9 and the FAMAS shouldn't have too much issues. But he has picked up a rifle. Yeah, uh, and the fact that he's here is just like might be a little bit bizarre. I guess the more time goes by, the more they're going to expect it. But um, the lack of armor here uh, is so funny. How they actually even got like maybe the first couple of kills you could say, yeah. but after that it was a uh, it was a little bit of a spectacle. He doesn't have the bomb, which is super unfortunate. If Shackles would have had that, he he's the one dictating this one versus two. He could go to B. He could plant the bomb. I guess mm. it could be way more interesting. But now they're just kind of hanging out, waiting for him to appear. I wonder whether there is a temptation to save. I know they're going to have a buy into towards the next, and they're going to have AKs, but you know, yeah. there's also that kind of thing about keeping that long-term economy in, in check as well. And that was something that really eluded maybe all the way throughout that previous. It's not going to be the case. And I think, honestly, you just lose that aim, or just use that not having armor. Aim punch, and yeah. uh, you know, if you had a bit of armor, they probably actually wins it out against the FAMAS. But B2K sees it off, and it will be a 2-0 start for Egypt. But... <laughs> Maybe pretty expensive against the low buy there, right? I mean, getting three out of five kills, yes. no one's complaining about at all. First of all, buy going to come through from the T side. 
We have to see Namibia start well now. They, they struggled to do so in towards Anubis, and that was the big issue. They lost the first three gun rounds from them, and by that point, we're talking about them being 7-1 down, right? So it was a, a really awkward spot that they were already put into. They can't allow for that to happen here in towards their map pick of Inferno. Well, here we go. Grenades down towards the middle of Banana. Not so much damage with the grenade. Shackles here. A double Ooh. kill would have been huge, but... They can't get the back up. Man, it's a good idea. Oh, Wessel, right to the smoke. He's going to be taken down nowhere, just making things even worse. Two versus four. There was a real chance there. The grenades from Egypt didn't really do that much on the banana position itself. Yeah. But the rifles certainly did. Shackles, the only one to really reply here. And Wessel, classic position, just jumping for information. Hard to catch someone back here. Let me be a... They really need, like, a, 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 like if they win a 2 versus 4 like this, get the team fired up. Like, get something going. Seth's going to be traded. It's all down to Tora. He was, I think, playing... He was one of their best players on the first map. Even yeah, though it wasn't yeah. a lot, but he had, like, a, a good couple of rounds. Not going to be able to make anything happen here, so Egypt just... Wow, they are... They're playing lights out Counter-Strike at the moment. Yeah, you can see as well, just for Egypt, the vibes are very high. They're playing quite lax in a sense. It's quite loose, but it's working. Sometimes, you know, one of the issues is when you start winning uh, and winning quite comfy, especially like, like like how it was in towards map number one and sort of how it's feeling early here, you can actually sort of take your foot off the gas and allow for mistakes to creep in. But, you know, they fight fire with fire into a banana, get really aggro, start to get up in their face, and then... I mean, even in this sort of loose style of play, they're not getting punished for it. So there's no real point changing things up. They know that they can rely off the back of the individual. They know they can trust somebody to push Banana and get a double kill or push in towards second mid and do exactly the same. So unless things change and they get punished for that, they don't really need to do anything kind of different, really, Egypt. Maybe they are going to take a little bit of attack pause and a conversation. This is actually something they didn't really do in towards map number one, especially when things were getting really out of hand. I mean, obviously, 10 rounds Egypt found in that first half, but Namibia, from my understanding, didn't even call a single attack pause. So yeah. we would have liked to have seen them, but they just didn't. At least they've called one early here and understood that, okay, first gun round loss, we've got to make something work for us going forward. Some Tech Nines have come out. Don't hate it. Probably a lot of it is going to rely on getting the first kill, though, and kind of opening up with a little bit of speed behind that. Already been slowed down. FaZe just having his way with them at the moment. And trying to see if they can make some entry into the middle. Oh, FaZe nearly getting caught, but he's got the back up there. Bingo ready to clean it up. Shackles. Oh. Good eagle shots. Really cool. I, You know, again, just for him individually, continuing to prove that he's got... He's got some someone to work with, but yeah. um, it's it's a lot right now. Egypt are just individually, like pound for pound, it feels like they are just a couple of steps ahead in terms of the mechanics. Yeah, can see FaZe going towards the AWPA as well. He has about 6.8k, so he actually could maybe pick it up if he wants to, and he will. I do actually like this sort of pick up for him. He's somebody who's had a lot of, of benefit when he did the AWPA in play, and he obviously had a really good round there with a the rifle too. But now he knows that Namibia are going to have a buy, and... Not quite enough money for an AWP, but at least an investment of their own. You're going to have the advantage at range. He knows they probably don't have enough money for the AWP unless somebody's been saving for the last couple of rounds. They didn't see anybody like that, so they know they should have these side advantages. Wesso going to be that first fight. It doesn't go well for him. Zephyr, we're caught with B2K in for the trade. At the very least, keeping the pressure on as B2K doubles down. As Tura gets caught as well. Nowhere gets tagged to make matters worse. And this could be Egypt once again converting yet another gun round in their favor and taking even more of a lead. Yeah, but this is hey, this is at least winnable. Ooh, FaZe. Missing a shot there. Does make it back around the corner. Going to be putting on a bit of a smoke. They've actually already smoked CT, so they might just want to go through right now. Ooh. I don't think their odds are going to improve, but FaZe will take down Shackles. That's a bit of a problem right now. Plenty of time on the clock, but backup is starting to get there. B2K playing on top of the box. That's so sick. Helping out FaZe. If he stays behind the smoke and behind yeah. the coffins there, yeah, phases alone, but uh, great play for B2K. Yeah, it's just completely overlooked there. Really well done. And I think for B2K, he knows that they've just smoked coffins and the attention's not going to be drawn there. It's all drawn over towards the Orpo, who's in the Molotov as well. So they know yeah. that it's sort of one or two ways. Either he dies in the Molotov, but he's still going to hold it regardless. He might swing through. So their attention both gets drawn there. B2K finds that perfect gap, jumps up, and more kills to his name. He's had a really, really good start in towards this map as well. That was a quad kill from him, and 8-1 to one is how he finds himself in the early part of this game. And a 5 0 start for Egypt. Zero complaints at all. The Orb can have a little peek into a second mid. Full oh blind. No idea, bingo. He was completely lost. And he'll get caught. Oh, 
Jackal's a little bit scuffed oh. there. He maybe could have had a headshot. It's curious to see Bingo was that much isolated when they actually had three people put, like on yeah. the banana position. So it kind of it was interesting to see Egypt not try to trade that kill earlier. But at the end of the day, they do trade it. And more so. So more than just trade it, actually get the kill on our second player. So pretty good. Bombs been picked up now, but three versus four. It's another round where Namibia have to try and fight their way back from the deficit, and it's just not that easy. Smoke goes up towards Arch, so putting a little bit of pressure on that side. Um, but actually, B2K is playing in front of that smoke, so he's going to have the information. Do they have a Molotov for his? Yeah, they do. Oh, it's Seth, though. He's up in the apartment, so they can't Molotov him out of the corner. This is tough. It'll come round. A little bit of chip damage being dealt primarily on towards Turret. Make this harder. One player in towards Mini. Alone, trying to stay alive. It's phase posted with the AWP in towards Short. Alone, going to get one of his own quick flick. But it's all about the flank. B2K yet another multi kill round from him. A 3K in that round. A 4K in the round prior. I mean, 11 to 1. This guy at the moment is unstoppable. Him and FaZe are flying away in terms of the fragging department. And a 6 0 start, Egypt. In a similar vein to what we saw in towards map number one, making this pretty one sided, right? There's no real conversation to be had at the moment for Namibia. Yeah. But once again, where we have to look to them and say, how are we actually going to change things up? They, they've got to try and basically take a, bit, a few more gambles, a few more risks, whether it's something going super quick out the gates, I think flying so. in towards Banana, flying in towards Top Mid and taking long control, something along those lines. Because right now, these defaults that they're playing out of spawn, it's not working. It's getting picked apart. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Like, you're doing. The default opens you up to losing more fights. Yes. Whereas the outer spawn calls, sure, it's more of a coin flip, but in on some sense, like if you can trade evenly in the first, like you run a banana and you trade two for two, then at least there's a three on three after plant, and you, like it's yeah. a better position than you're in now. So I kind of agree, like just try yeah. and do that. And what have we got to lose, right? Yes, I think it's probably the it, way right. you've got to think about it. You're 6-0 down. You've already lost map number one. This is your map pick. Unless things change, unless you're going to put this pressure on, you need to break the economy of Egypt. So you need to do something unorthodox to really even give yourself a chance in towards this game. This is how you have to do it. I mean, playing these defaults is what's absolutely killing them, unfortunately. They did take attack pause. They had a conversation. They will get a buyout here, but a MAC-10 and a Galil, and a few Galils have to come in towards the conversation. So we'll make round number seven maybe a little bit more uncomfortable than they would like. But sometimes then a MAC-10 changes the way you approach the, the, the game itself, right? You play a little bit more right. quick. You play a, bit, a little bit more up in your face. Interesting for alone. Maybe a little bit exposed here. Is they going to lose Bingo in the middle? Double setup in the hallways. They don't want to push it, but you know what? They found a bit of an opening. They've taken a lot of damage in return, unfortunately, but might be one of the better chances here for Namibia to get around on the board finally. Push down to the bottom, Ooh. Shackles, nice headshot. Can he follow it up? But he can. I think that should be enough. There's nobody on the B-bomb site here. Egypt, I don't see them getting back into this round. Nowhere, just waiting in the corner. Takes down FaZe and alone. If he was going to win this round, it'd probably have to be some sort of ninja defuse. And yeah. they know where he is, so that's not going to be a big issue. Right, well done, Namibia on the board. Yeah, great round to be taken for Namibia. And that's the sort of one that's going to give you a lot of confidence. Only the one casualty, you get an AWP picked up as well. You get the upgrades with the AKs. All you can say is positives in that. And the only thing that we now come into this round is it has to be a consecutive round taken. Uh, oh, yeah. If you win it and then immediately go back and lose, you know, straight off the back of it, it's, it's going to completely kill you in terms of your mental. The morale can fly out the window and all the rest. And for Egypt, no issues reinvesting back in. Obviously, the rounds one in arrears has given them plenty of a cash. So go straight back into a buy. Faze still picks up the AWP, so no problems that side. Flash and a smoke in towards top car. And a pop shot through, it won't really connect, but maybe a little bit of information to work with. Nadal break open, said smoke, and FaZe will find the shot. And it's a big frag to find. Shackles has been great in terms of these opening parts of the round. Yeah, and unfortunately, like, the... Life of a banana entry player is just like that. So, you know, Shackles, <laughs> he's, uh, he's actually doing what he has to do. Like, if yeah. you're playing banana entry, you just have to adopt the mindset, like, I'm going to die in most rounds. Mm. But if, if the rounds where I find one kill, I've done my job. Like, yeah. that's all I need to do. So, credit to him for, for keeping it up. Like, you, you just have to just stay strong in that moment and try and make your way through. Six to one. And round number eight here. Not the best start, unfortunately, for Namibia. Tricky to see if they could get back into this round here. It's, uh, this 
crazy Please. thing, they, they were spamming alone and somehow they avoided him. Somehow, right? So he's spamming the window. He was standing behind it, gets avoided, and he stays up here. So they slightly overlooked the angle. And it's Bingo and B2K who combine for kills. Alone gets overlooked because they spam that and realize, right, nobody's there. We didn't hear a tag. We yeah. didn't do any damage to him. So they come in swinging, looking low. And then he gets away with that first kill. And then that drags attention towards his position and allows for the other two to pounce. Small little things like that are going just right for Egypt. And unfortunately, now maybe left all down to one. Nowhere. Orb in play for him to try and make something out of this. He'll get tagged and now probably hunted as well. They've heard that orb. There's no point letting that stay alive. Miss shot, but more information gained. And he's now starting to be oh, circled. Yeah. They smell blood in the water. B2K will collapse upon that position with a double kill of his own and a 13 to 2 start for him. I mean, he's having a whale of a time. And the one thing we said that they don't want to do is, is win a round finally and then lose the one trail off the back of it. And unfortunately, that's what happens. And this is the exact same thing that happened towards map number one. Remember in the past when that would actually reset the round loss oh bonus? Oh my god, oh. yeah. Obviously, for MR12, that would actually destroy the game. Like, yeah, you know, it'd for be MR15, unplayable. Yeah. For MR15, it was really rough, but for MR12, it would be, yeah, it would be unplayable. Um, you'd lose like two gun rounds and you would actually just lose the game. Yeah, like, like it's simple as that. Just like, you, yeah, you could lose <laughs> one, the wrong round at the wrong time in the game and like you'd just be, the entire half would be without money, basically. All right, here we go. Seth will take down Bingo at the start. Namibia with another good opening. See if they can keep it going alone. Just jiggling the corner. Actually, more than that. Doing a little bit of damage on top. Throws down the incendiary just to hold them back. But they want to see if they can power their way through. All oh, right into the HG. That's devastating. They jump into it alone with three quick kills. The combination of the incendiary. A little bit of damage on top of the HGs that are coming through was pi actually pitch perfect. Yeah. Everything that Cougar right there for alone does go right. Does God's work. It's, what a hold from him. And of course, now Zeph left all alone in a one versus three, and they sort of know where he is, and they don't need to fight him. They know he can't get towards the site. Now he can. Good final towards Faith. Long player. Let's go. Collected. Smoke going to go down in towards short, and a plant to come down for that position too. Now he does have room to work with a one versus two, which isn't completely out of the realms of possibility. Maybe a chance to work with B2K and Wezo. Both had their moments, primarily B2K when it comes towards the fragging department, but... Zeph started to slip the net a little bit, planted for himself, and they started to capitalize upon this position. They don't know where he is. Smoke down in towards short, gonna make this awkward, but he's repositioned, and he might just find a little bit of a gap. Spam, though. He's gotta get he on remember. it. Oh, he's, he just expected it to be a, a tap and peak, and it wasn't. They didn't expect the stick. And inside of that smoke, it will be once again yet another round for Egypt and B2K to add yet another kill to his tally. It's I think that's a risk maybe maybe worth taking. If the spam goes wrong, they can just kill him. I think he's just hoping that maybe they've, they've tapped and he can take a little gamble. But Yeah, honestly, I liked everything about that uh, attempt entirely for, for, for Seth, right? Yeah. Like the, the, even the rotation around and the smoke, honestly, it was so close to being a horrible smoke for yeah. Egypt. Like it was too far out towards short. Yeah. So uh, very unlucky, unfortunately, but... Um, yeah, that was always going to be a hard round to win. Like a one versus three for him. I think there was a way at the end there. But eight to one, the scoreline. Nowhere going to get run down in the middle. It's B2K, who's I mean, he's just completely running wild with this yeah. game at the moment. He is 16 and two at this very moment. But it looks like a bomb plant's coming through because there's nobody at the bomb site. So yeah, they're, they're going to keep going. Why slow it down? I like this change of pace. Namibia, just start making these calls. Keep going. Put on some speed behind <laughs> this. Oh, a surprise for alone. Shackle's going to get traded, but again, like I said, a bomb at least is going to get planted. Yeah, Molotov can't deny that, but at least he can move somebody out of their position. This is tough. Number to advantage on the post bomb, but when you look towards Egypt, they don't really have the information to work with. Yeah, and it's going to take them a while, right? Like, this yeah. could be a very tricky round. Apparently, the grenades on the Egyptian side, but the interesting thing, there are two Molotovs left on Namibia, so that could really slow everything down. You can see them being put out now, both towards short. I'm not sure if that's the best choice. Oh. Kazi goes down, B2K. He's just. Undefeated right now. He just can't be stopped, really. Tura finally going to be able to shut him down, and time is running low. Bingo, close range, going to go for the defuse. Oh, it's inside of the smoke. Seth, can you do it this time? Trying to get the line up, but he's not got it. And it's going to be the defuse happening. <laughs> oh, and a scope from Bingo. Disgusting clutch for him. What a round coming through right at the end there. I mean, small little things go wrong. I think so. So B2K throws a Molotov from a partner that banks in towards pit wall, but it has to travel through the door. And actually, you, you throw it from quite deep. In that situation, Kazi's got to swing on balcony. He sees the molly come out. That's yeah. that perfect timing. He doesn't. He actually allows B2K to reposition just, just here. He's got to swing, right? And he doesn't. And that allows B2K to get that preferential peak. And it gives him space to work on towards the site and actually gain information that as a player in towards the back corner. Small little things like that go right for Egypt and unfortunately go wrong over towards Namibia. 
phase. The orb on scopes at the worst time. But again, information gains maybe not the worst thing in the world, especially when it doesn't cost you your life. Yeah, like seeing players there in, in, in second mid, especially that far back, you're right. Like it gives you, you have an idea about what the early start of the round looks like from the T side. So definitely always worth knowing. Nine to one. Again, it's been lightning fast this half here. B2K on 17 and three. It's pretty <laughs> wild. 152 ADR as well. Love it. Live face. Had his moments as well. 12 to seven for him. Not exactly bad. A nice opening find for the Orpa. Alone. He's loved this position. But a nail will be chunky on towards Kazi. An opening kill. Alone look for two. Can't quite get it. Bingo can trade and Bingo can double down. That's beautiful. Zeph left all alone in a matter of mere moments. And FaZe will start the round and he'll close it too with that AWP. 10 to 1. Once again, Egypt get double digits in the first half. Surely that's game set already. Yeah, they've they've really come in. I think we, we try to paint a picture at the start of it where, you know, some of that could work for Namibia is the fact that like they lost the last game, so they could adjust a little bit. Yeah. But they're playing different maps. Mm -hmm. And you know, like they if they have like a a day where they are the ones who are fired up, but I think it's 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 it turned into the opposite, right? Like the fact yeah. is Egypt has shown up today with excessive confidence and they're just feeling so good about this game right now. So uh, kind of kinda of hard to overcome right now for Namibia, there's just no question about it. Yeah, I mean what can you really do, right? When you're playing as well as Egypt are. They're just not missing. Nobody is, right? Nobody's really been having uh, an inherently sort of a bad game. Yes, Wesso has been a little bit lesser on uh, kind of the kills as he was in towards map number one. He was the MVP of map number one, but he's just playing the positions which don't really get the action. So you can't even really blame him all too much. I'll flash out, final round of this half. They want to just try and see it off in a, maybe a little bit of a positive note, but it's not looking good. Bingo alone again, combining, phase finding one with the AWP as well, leaving Zeph all alone. One foot in the grave with three points of HP and a hope and a prayer to try and make this sort of round convert. I don't think he's going to have the chance to do so, and he doesn't even have the bomb. Yeah, so tagged up here. Quick scope at the end. FaZe will be able to pick it up. 11-1, Egypt. They are, I mean, there's nothing I think that could derail them at this yeah. point in time, right? They're looking for that third place here. African Esports Championships. They are, they are, they, they look like they're locked in for it. Yeah, they've been great all the way throughout. Being, I mean, we've kind of seen some of these individuals as well, like, you know, Bingo, who we highlights coming towards the game or alone at that 30k in the OT yesterday. Uh, you, you know, we're, we're seeing, we, we said these are the names who are going to make a difference. And the fact that now everybody's having their moments, I think, is the, the real worrying thing with Namibia. They do have their individuals too. I mean, Shackles doesn't exactly look bad. He's playing that relentless B entry, which is a difficult position. 87 ADR is oh, no yeah. kind of bad feat when you're 11 1 down. But. I mean, it is just one of those where, as a, as a team, it's only one or side, in it? 11 to 1. If this pistol gets lost by Namibia, I think it's pretty safe to say this might be game set for them, right? They've struggled to get in towards this game, and Egypt have just looked perfect, more or less, all the way throughout. I think it's a lot in, like, the some of the micro, like, fights that are happening for Egypt that mm -hmm. Namibia, if they wanted to go home and study it, like, that that's, would be the place to start. It's, like, the, some of the jiggles that are coming out and, like, yeah. the very tight angles, like, it's all down to, like, oh. very, very small things that, that put them a couple of steps ahead in, in so many of these battles here. FaZe, starting off the second half, first pistol kill goes his way. And that opens up a lot of things. But again, they don't really jump on it. They say, well, we've got two smokes and a Molotov and a flashbang. Let's just wait. See if there's a reaction, and if not, then we can decide where we want to execute afterwards. So, I don't, I don't hate it. Nowhere wants to find the information. He knows someone's there, but he can't find the kill. And now I think that kind of opens up the gates here towards the A-bomb site. Molotov down towards the pit. Kazi's burning in the back here. Hunted down, yeah. He was probably always going to die. Like, yeah, Molotov was right on top of him. Bob will go down, planted. And now a 2v4 on the retake. No kit to work with either, just... Both half-armor USPS. Both stuck behind that smoke as well. Going to make things very difficult indeed. Do we... I mean, there's honestly, there's then again a conversation to be about keeping hold of the half-armor, but it's not going to be the case. Wesso finds one. And Zeph, who does get a consolation kill, gets caught on the trade. 12-2-1. And Egypt Ooh. on their opponent's map pick are just one round away from the map in the series in lightning fast fashion. Unfortunately for Namibia, they've got a force buy in towards this, but losing a pistol like that really just doesn't give you a hell of a lot of economy to work with. This feeling, this does feel like it could be the beginning of the end here. I mean, what? I mean, probably the quickest game we've had, maybe nearly all the way throughout this tournament so far. We had, I yeah. think there was one back-to-back 13-0. Uh, that was actually Egypt, funnily enough, in towards the groups. But aside from that, it's been a, a real masterclass. Yeah, comprehensive work coming out right now for the Egyptian squad again. Proving in the region, they're a team or a country to look forward to into the future. Like I, think, I bet they're going to be keeping filling more teams here. 
that are going to be this powerful. Phase get a kill on Shackles. There's still a player behind them. Kasi actually doing great work with the 5-7. A couple of good headshots here. Might be able to claim the round behind it. Two versus two as Wezo is running wild in the back with a MAC-10 and actually might make the corner. Oh, the models have such perfect work coming out for her alone. One versus one. Nowhere versus Wezo here. Flashbang to go on over. Bomb not planted, but there's a minute and 10 seconds, so that's not the most important part here. Nowhere. Does he get faked out? Oh, he's got the right angle for it. Nicely done. I don't think Wesso was ready for that. So, another round for Namibia. Yeah, scrappy to say the least in that situation. Down to the one versus one. Hey, at least Namibia stay alive on that, you know, slight little force by coming through. They had to go for it, right? There's no two ways about it. They're sort of on this last life, backs up against the wall, but it's good for them. It means an AK to work with, a little bit of a reinvestment. And it also will mean with no bomb plant, Egypt can't really buy. I mean, there's an argument to be made about sort of matching force buy with force buy. There's definitely something that a lot of teams go in for. And that is actually what they're going to go for here. Sort of fight fire with fire. And that's a, a hard way to reset the economy. It's sort of how MR12 in this sort of current economic state works. So I don't hate this decision by Egypt. And they've just seen Namibia do it, so why can't we is sort of the confidence level they're, they're probably having. We're 12-2 up. What have we really got to lose? We're not really risking all too much by going right. for this. Yeah, like they they, then they know. They yeah. just have to one of the next 10 rounds. They're, they're probably quite sure they can do that. So yeah. my, why not? Why not have a little bit of fun as well? I think, um, yeah, like it's... Be interested to figure out if there's a way to get Namibia to like to have that practice for for next year in terms of like some sure. of these small fights, you know, because I, I really think a lot of this is in the in how they navigate some of the angles when they're when they're up close. Like you'd see Egypt have a higher level understanding of how to take some of those like micro yeah. engagements that just like it's down to like milliseconds and you have the advantage, right? And it's, if, if you don't practice against that on a daily basis, yeah. it's super super hard to get the feel for how that works. Um, so yeah, hopefully they can uh, they can find a way to find some practice partners. Again, maybe in South Africa there's a there's yeah. a way like a way to uh, to get like a reasonable fight um, against some of those guys because I think with that like again they could they could level up their game quite a bit. Yeah, get them on the skybox. So you see you see where things are going wrong. I yeah. guess in that sense. I mean, the, figure it out. It is just these small things that I think the the awkward thing is you do a few small things in a round and they compounds right. And I think that's sort of where. Things have yeah. been quite costly for Namibia. But, I mean, at least this round started well. I don't think two. Made that. Not three. Hang on a moment. Bingo. We'll get one. And Kazi on the pressure towards his backside. He get overwhelmed here. And he will. Sight open. Plant goes down. And now this round, the script has flipped. Deagle and a tech nine for the minute. Ooh, relocating. I don't know about that. That's unbelievably scary. But somehow he gets away with it. Gets a headshot on the Tura. How's it gone this far? They do have a kit on the other side. So they got a little bit of time to work with right now. But... To be a painful way for Namibia to potentially lose it. Chaos is everywhere. Alone does go down. It's to the Deagle no. in the corner. One bullet on Seth will do it, and he can't quite land it. It's very close, but nice clutch at the end. They get to keep it alive. That would have been a painful round to lose. Yeah, absolutely. Back two backgrounds where it goes down to the one versus one. It goes down to the wire as well, with both players being tagged. But thank God Namibia able to see it off, and it keeps them afloat. And once again, I mean, Egypt, a bomb plant, four to five kills, they could be tempted to fall by again, right? I think, you know, in kind of the position that they're in, especially with how confident they've been. Yeah. I've seen so many teams do this where they're like, we made that one so close. Why don't we just do it again? Why don't we see if this time it can be the case? It looks like we're just going to see Tech 9 half by and fall by in towards the next to close it. But Fair enough. All in all for Egypt, so damn close. I mean, Seth was barely, barely alive in that situation. But a good clutch coming through from him. They knew where both of them were, right? The reposition, they knew he was stuck in second oranges. They knew the other guy was fighting from dark. So I think they always had the information. It was just about hitting the shots on Namibia. And thankfully, Oh, here we do. go. Look at how quick it is. Tura goes down. The Technon rushes are so scary. Now, they don't run into someone right away. So there's a little bit of a slowdown here. But it's not oh. for long. Again, they're overwhelming them. The bomb side is lost. And... That bomb plant going to be picked up right there. So it's going to be coming any second. Bit of a crossfire here. I do like that. Shackle <laughs> shot in the back. And That's yeah, it. Egypt just finding the way. I think the speed behind that attack is so hard to communicate if you're on the CT side. Like it's, yeah. it's over before you even know it hits you. And we wanted to see those exact rounds from Namibia. Yes. Right? They're the rounds that we want to see from them. When things are going bad, a change of tempo will give you a lot to work with. And unfortunately, they just never really did it. They played a lot of these defaults on a spawn. And unfortunately, this is what you're left in. 1v3, try and clutch things up. It will be closed out. Bingo. 
will conclude things. But what a round to seal it, the deal on, right? A half oh, by yeah. uh, just to conclude things. And Egypt, all the way throughout this series, just looked fantastic. There's very few things you can say about them on a negative note. They were great. And I think, unfortunately for Namibia, they just met their match. They lost them in the groups 2-0. to zero. That one was a 13-8, 13-6. And yeah. then here in the rematch, Egypt, it seems like they've just warmed up throughout the tournament. And here in this third match playoff, they just look great. Yeah, so great stuff. We knew already from the online qualifier that Egypt were going to be a strong contender for yeah. the for the region. Now they can claim, you know, third place at the African Esports mm -hmm. Championships. I'm sure that that's something that they're going to want to improve for next time. Yeah. Uh, no question about it. Like, I think they've got the caliber to, uh, you know, to finish top, you know, even like they finish at the top, even uh, if they yeah, can do sure. it like this. So um, super exciting. Um, and yeah, they were just very, very fired up today. Um, lots to learn for Namibia, but I think, uh, you know, overall, good starting position. Um, definitely something to build with, uh, and we got to learn some new names of, of uh, you know, some interesting players. I think uh, all across the board, like they had a lot going on. And it does spell actually some quite good times for the region as well. When you've got, you know, we already knew that Tunisia and South Africa were good regions with great counter strike yes. kind of etiquette, and we knew in that sense that we were expecting them to make it to the next stage, and, and they did, right? But the the fact that you've got now a third team who are equally kind of as competitive, they look really great, and you can see that Egypt they had the protocols, they had the setups, and a lot of util lineups as well. These small things that just showcase that they've been putting the work in. Yeah, having now a third team, you know. Even though there's only two spots available, it's really actually good for the region and makes it competitive going forward. And we all know that just competition makes the game better, makes the yeah. region better. So uh, I think in that sense, that's really good to see. And Namibia, like we said, for them, if they can get these opportunities to practice a little bit more domestically, play against some of these top South African teams, uh, I don't know exactly what the ping's going to be like over there. It shouldn't be too bad, I think, if I'm right in saying. So well, workable, right? And I think in that yeah. sense, it's just about learning where your mistakes are and how you can kind of plug them in towards an official. And like we've been saying, like there are more lands happening uh, in South Africa, so maybe they can yeah. get, you know, to go to some of those lands that would be really sick. Yeah. I don't know what the visa situation are like between those two countries, but it'd be really cool if there was a way to get some of these players to, to you know attend more of those lands, yeah, build up some experience throughout the years, and and you know come back stronger. That'd be really sick. So hopefully yeah. they get those opportunities. They certainly had a lot to learn here, and you know being on stage and everything. I'm sure they're going to be enjoying that. Spingo on top. I mean, uh, yeah, it could have been him. It could have been B2K. Like both of them were playing lights yeah. out. Yeah, Bingo walks away in terms of the numbers department, but I, I really do have to give a shout-out to B2K. I mean, the impact this guy had. I mean, he Monstrous. was getting multi-kill rounds time and time again. I mean, without a shadow of a doubt, that first half, he set the tone early. I think without him stepping up in the way that he was, it actually would have been maybe at times a little bit more close in terms of maybe a couple more rounds for Namibia. So, yeah, credit to Bingo, but also B2K definitely gets a shout-out as well. That guy was cr incredible all the way throughout. And this is the thing we're talking about. We have multiple different facets of where firepower is being found here by Egypt. Oh, yeah. That is such a good thing to have, right? Multiple different players who can step up. We already saw the alone get a 30 uh, kill game in, in that wow. OT yesterday, right? We saw the likes of you know, Bingo Wesso went towards map number one. He was the top fragger there, over 100 ADR. So we have multiple different kind of uh, issues where we are, and unfortunately they couldn't. But that is us concluded for the third place playoff. We're going to throw this one over to a break. We shall see you soon. Thank you for joining us in a bit.